So, are you curious? Welcome to the Curiosity Codex. I am your ardent enthusiast, Kyle Olson. Did you miss me? I missed you. As you probably surmised, we're on hiatus from our conversation with Mandy Fabian. We'd been talking so much, we actually caught up with their post-production. We couldn't talk about cutting a trailer, for instance, because she hadn't actually cut the trailer yet. But during our break, work has continued on Just Plus None, and I'm pleased to say we're back in conversation. It'll still be a few weeks before new episodes drop, but we're going to bring this plane in for a landing. But while we're waiting, friend of the show, Rob Cabosco, came to me with an idea. He'd been noticing how two different long-running sci-fi franchises with very passionate fans were handling making new stories while dealing with nostalgia, and he wanted to talk about it. Here's that conversation. So here's a conversation we're going to have. Okay. Um, we have just finished watching the, uh, the entire Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Yes. Potentially... All of it. Maybe that was it. We we'll think see. That, we think well, at this it point, should, though, it, it should be, but I'll talk about that later. <laughs> all six episodes. Uh, six episodes. And we are up to date on Strange New Worlds. Yes. Episodes one through seven. Yes. At, at the time of recording, that is where we're at. That is where we are. Just to put that in perspective. Yeah. And uh, this, we decided we would have a conversation, and I said, well, I have an idea. Okay. This will be either titled Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Strange New Worlds, mm, okay. or... A nostalgic fan service versus canon busting nostalgia. Okay, sure. That's okay. deep. It's meaty. Yeah. A little complicated. Or it's 2022, and why is Star Trek so much better than Star Wars? <laughs> and I'm not saying that's a declarative statement. <laughs> that's a question. Is it though? Dig into. Yeah. Or is it though? That's okay. So question. here's the deal. So we're we're done with Obi Wan Kenobi. Okay. So we want to talk about Obi Wan first. Yes. And that's fresh at the top of our mind. Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. What would you think? Okay. All right. So I had a. I, I was. Ex- we were at Star Wars Celebration when the first two episodes dropped. Well, that's true. Yes. And so we got to. We saw Hayden Christensen. We saw Ewan McGregor and and a bunch of the other cast members stuff too. So we couldn't have been more excited because everyone there was. And then it was great. Coming back the, the next day, knowing that everyone that we saw yeah. had been in their hotel rooms watching those episodes yes, because correct. oddly they never they didn't only screen them for a small select people who sort of won a chance right. to do it. Uh, so that was a so there was a lot of enthusiasm just going on there. So looking back, I, I guess I have the same sort of complaints that I, I sort of have with the with the prequels and stuff too, where it's like, yeah, okay, and. I mean, it yeah. was was it what I wanted? Uh, yeah, that's the hard thing about Star Wars is that how much of it is built on fan expectation. Like we were there with Father Roderick, right. and so uh, during one of the, his conversations, we were talking about it, and he asked me a question that I had never been asked before, and he said, "How much has Star Wars influenced you in your life?" Oh. And I said, "That is impossible for me to judge because it's the first movie I remember seeing, and it has always been there." So it is a fundamental part of my of my of my life. Your DNA. Yeah, it's I don't. In your DNA. I don't remember there ever not being a Star Wars. Like everybody talks about oh, Star Wars changed wow. everything. I'm like, yes, but for us, for our generation, for Gen X, it's always been there. So I I have no sense of perspective. So that's part of what makes this weird is that. It's it's you have an emotional connection to it, so you're instantly like, Ugh, mm, if it's not quite what you wanted or what you expected and stuff too. So getting back to to this, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging this to say, I, I I'm not without bias. Oh <laughs> sure, no, no, exactly, like, exactly, right. exactly. So uh, yeah, so I, I so I obviously I came up with the holy trilogy, right. uh, those ones, and then the prequels were sort of like the the new thing that came out, and I was you know when I was in my twenties or whatever, it was sort of like oh not really exactly what I, and then right. obviously the sequel trilogy we showed to our children, sure. so it's a different sort of thing. But so I don't have the same kind of connection to um, you and McGregor's Obi Wan that I would to like Harrison Ford as as. Uh, I was going to say Ben Solo. <laughs> Timeline. Han Solo. I like that kind of thing. Like he sure. was that guy. So, but, I, but I love you, McGregor. I love, and I, and I love the, the spirit they went into this. But at the same time, it's a really dark, depressing sort of story. And 
Also, uh, I love Hayden Christensen. Why did you bring him back for just that? Like, what, did he shoot for one day? Because you know, it's well, no. There's for, for all the hype they absolutely. did about bringing him back. They, there's so little of him in it that I don't know. I, I guess it was like this felt like a Star Wars novel. So I don't. Okay, what what I am left with is, and and I'm trying to, and I'm going to probably bring in a little bit of like some of our fan knowledge of the the production difficulties that this show had. Yes, because it was originally a movie, right? Then it was made canceled. a series. Yeah. It got canceled. It was made a series. Yep. Now it's they, potentially. They, they, we heard that they threw out everything they had. They had written the season, right? And then they went. This is way too dark and depressing. They threw it all out and then started again. And then and then the idea that they may have. Je- uh, uh, like jettison some scenes from the final episode yeah. so that they could leave open things for a second season. Yeah, which potentially at I, time I, recording. I, I, at time recording, but I'm just going to say yeah, this: if you've seen know. it, I don't know what those things are. Yeah, because it's kind of a closed story, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, here's the biggest issues I have here with this, and and I'm going to come a long way around to a to a, a statement I'm going to make. Okay, which is going to I say, you, you want to do positives and negatives? Well, the po- let's do positives. We'll, we'll try okay. to be positive. Uh, Leia. Oh, the girl putting, putting Leia in there was such a brilliant move. Yes, I, I did not see it coming at all. And yes. then as soon as they went to Alderaan and started, I was like, <gasps> it was like that. Was, yeah. She was the best part of the. I mean, Ewan, Ewan was fantastic, and I and the limited amount of Hayden we got was great too. But like that act, I don't even know what her actress name is. But like that portrayal of Leia was so wonderful. Yeah. And no, just I agree. I, I, part of her life I had never really considered before. Like they yeah. kept showing us Luke, Luke, Luke. No, it's the right. other one. And I would say, well, I would say Ian McGregor. Yeah. No, I mean his look. At, here's the deal. He and this this is a teaser for what I'm going to say later. Okay. His performance of Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Is maybe ten times what Alec Guinness committed wow. to, yeah. to film? Yeah, I would say that. I mean, true. I mean for real, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know who's done the numbers, but yeah. like, if you read Alec Guinness's biography, he does not have any really positive things to say. Well, about no, but, but Star I mean, like, Wars actual, but I'm actual seconds on film uh, yes. as the character. Yes. Ian McGregor is this character. Yes, and Alec Guinness is the character, like at the end yes. for a little bit, yeah. like. Like, yeah. so, so there's that. And I have to say, he's very comfortable in it. I've accepted him as Obi-Wan yeah. and I love it. And I enjoy that. I thought there were, and especially in, I'd say the third episode, but more so in the sixth episode, yeah. there were the seminal moments that you like as a fan. And this yeah. is where I get into the whole fan service, nostalgic fan service yeah, yeah. that you got. Yeah. I, I look at, and again, we assume you've, this is spoilers. We, sure. We've seen it. Yeah. We got battle damaged vader yes in live action yes i was I, that was the thing i was most excited about and that was my favorite moment of the entire six episodes was that yeah i mean, I mean we got that yeah. we got the the now the the other battle fight and we got yeah. two of them yes which after seeing the second one we didn't need the first one but oh, that's another <laughs> another conversation i'll have but like you know we got it we got the fight we got to see the castle on on mustafar yeah. We got yeah. to see the Inquisitor's base. Yeah, the Inquisitor base. Which, which if you're a big, if you're a fan of the Fallen Fallen Order, yeah. right? Like you got to see that. Yeah. You got to see Owen and 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 Baru yeah. and sort of this young Luke and all of this. You got yeah. to see. You got to see things. Yeah. And I will say this from the sixth episode is there were these moments that you wanted to just pause yeah. the screen and go, "That's a beautiful scene." Yeah. It's just a beautiful moment. And this is where we're going to get into now the problems. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I in many times in that sixth episode, I went, I'm having Rise of Skywalker vibes, mm. which is this is beautiful. Yeah, it's an incredible action sequence yeah. in it's... the whole scheme of the story of Star Wars. Yeah, eh. and, and also things just happen. And it's, yes, it's, it's, there's no internal logic like the the I think that thing that drove me crazy was um, they had the whole thing about the siege. So, like, you've got yes. Obi-Wan is in the base with the people and trying to get him out. It, it's a great in turn for building tension. Bunch of stormtroopers on the outside. Reva, they're trying to get in. What's it, What are they going to do? And then they have the thing where they finally get in. Darth Vader goes in. Ship takes off. Darth Vader stops it in midair. Sure. Because somebody apparently had played a lot of Force Unleashed because that's yes. exactly what Star Killer yes. does. <laughs> Which we've never fan seen. Service, nostalgic fan, fan service. Fan service, right? 100%. Like, yes. that was absolutely what that is. Stops it. And then... Immediately, like, like, ha-ha, he breaks it down and destroys it. And then the second ship just goes, ha-ha, and it lifts off and takes off. Like, oh, it was the other ship. Why? Why? Okay. And then and then after he's like, oh, and, and, and internally, you know, Anakin was going, 
Oh, man. <laughs> Darn it, they got away again. Oh, that's when Riva attacks him. So many fundamental structural problems with that scene. Like, why, if you're going to attack Darth Vader, do it while he's distracted? Yes. Like, as he's standing there, yes. holding in the ship, that's when you attack him. And also, if he could reach out his right hand and stop a ship in midair, and then he brought it back to the down, and, he, and it was on the ground, crashed, he wasn't doing anything, and the second ship takes off, he could just reach out his hand again and stop that ship, too. So, there was nothing to stop that from happening. That whole way, they, and then then he has the, I mean, then he just basically spanks Reva. I mean, like, you know, he just, he just rope a dope, sir. Like, you know, it's like, you, it doesn't even well, okay. break a sweat under that, you know, giant metal hood. So that, 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 that's and, and totally that, right. I think that scene basically is, is a, a fundamental thing of like the whole show of like, this wasn't well thought out. Oh, wait. I'll give you a better one. Well, well, that's and that's the first of all, that's the illusion of Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Somehow he's back. Yes. Right. Somehow Palpatine. Returns. But oh, my God, look at all this cool stuff that just happened. Uh -huh, yeah. Right. So I have a real problem with that. But here's the other. Here's a couple of the other issues as we've talked. And I think you've heard me say make fun of this. <laughs> so when I was growing up in Star Wars and even in the prequels, impaled by a lightsaber through the chest meant instant death. Yes. Fatal. That is no longer the case. Apparently not. And not just for Sith, yeah. but also pe but younglings yeah. and Inquisitors. Yeah. Reva got and stabbed through the chest twice. twice. Like, <laughs> people. Yeah. Does anyone have not have a problem with this? Yeah. Like, I don't understand this. And also, why is Vader letting them live? Well, okay. Twice he let her live. Why? And, and okay. Here's here's okay. And, I mean, I'm gonna jump all Obi -Wan, around. Too like dropping the thing on. Like, haha! I dropped a bunch of rocks on him. Oh, job okay. done. Wait, what? Oh no, hold on. Okay, wait. Let's let's start, let's start let's start with the first problem. Okay, P character Riva. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Horrible. First of all, yeah. Everyone who saw that first episode or two, yeah. I remember we were talking about yeah. it. Yeah, she she's in yeah. the first shot, right? right. Like exactly. you knew that she was the youngling. Sure. She's if angry because. Anakin shows up, slaughters them. Yeah. And you find out, oh, yeah, she also slaughters her. Yeah. Kills the But, you know, but not crew. dead. Right. Because apparently she survived. Yeah. Never explained. Yeah. Never explained why the, the younglings are in the frozen Cyberman tombs. Yeah. Right. And like, not, which by the way, any of you who are <laughs> like dark reference. water fans, yeah, right. there it is, right? Yeah. So you don't explain why did she get, why did she get pulled from the gutter? Yeah. Okay. You have all that. She's angry. Yeah. She's trying to get back at him. And but but yet I don't want help from nobody because only I can do this. Yeah. Figures out that there might be an alliance between Obi-Wan and maybe I can figure this out. Tries to finally do it at the wrong time. Yep. Um gets gets impaled again through the through the heart or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Somehow survives and goes, I know how I'll get back at him. I know how I'll get back at all of everybody. I found this mixed message about this kid who's living on Tatooine. Yeah. I'm going to go get that kid and do something to him. Yeah. I, and what was her plan? And what was the plan of that? Yeah, I, I, I didn't get that either. And also, the in that recording, didn't Bale say he was going to be on Tatooine? Now, I don't know about that. Well, now she and she gets fragments of the recording. She right. She gets fragments. Recording. That's fine. But I thought like he because I was like waiting for Deus Ex Organa. Right. The, the to whole, show up. I find that as Luke is running and hiding, I'm like, oh, Bale's going to get him. So wait, I, d I don't I don't understand. I might be just being stupid. Though. Well, Reva total it, the fizzle fizzled out completely. Yeah, it didn't work out like they expected. She, to. If, if it was supposed to be her journey. Well, her journey stunk. Yeah. Her, her, the end of her journey stunk. Right. I guess part of the other thing is that you, you establish this whole thing of, like, they've wiped out the Jedi, but now there's the Inquisitors. Okay. If you didn't watch Star Wars Rebels. Right. Who the hell are these people? Oh, yeah. Where did they, why did, how did they get trained? Who did they come from? And yeah. they've alluded to it. Yeah. But wait, and you're, you're, already, you're already begging. The real question is, yeah. what happened to them? Right. So why did they get? Yeah. They, where, where do they go? They failed, obviously, right? I guess. Or, or we've been there already. Yeah. The Empire had a clone army, got yeah. rid of the clone army because of issues. Yeah. Is that the issue? Right. Like, is, does it end with Vader just killing them all? Like, I, why, I, like, why does the, if, if there's the rule of two. Yes. Which is, by the way, is, is stupid. Why, <laughs> George, why do, does, the em, does the Emperor let them exist? So, okay. I, doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Reva 
started we get inquisitors but don't get Mara Jade what the oh, no see and I'm going to tell you this and I don't understand and I don't understand that either yeah. the Reva character started interesting yep. may, and may I say strong yep really went sideways and the end is I don't understand this and yeah. to be honest with you she should have died yeah because because what what is that character coming back yeah. again so, like, and to do what yeah I, yeah, exactly. Like, like if to you're trying what? to if you're trying to spin her off like Book of Boba Fett, it ain't gonna happen. No, stop. It's not. And and I don't need another. I don't need another modded Fennec Shang. Like no. I don't need like <laughs> no. whatever she needs because she's obviously hurt. That doesn't make any sense. No, I do not understand I, I that at be, all. I would be interested in in having a, a rise of the of the Inquisitors though. I like sure. show, tell me that story like in some way, shape, or form. Like I know that they they, they show up in Rebels and that's the big seventh sister and I know uh, yeah. Sam Geller and all like and like and that's great. But like I want to know like the formation of it. Like why does Vader well, even let them get this far? Well, okay, so now here, yeah, that's a good segue. Anakin. Ah, yes, Anakin. So this was moments of brutal Vadery goodness that you wanted. Sure, that we've all imagined. Imagined, got a peak of it in Rogue One. Yep. Yep, but never to- actually totally understood. Got to see. Not to see it in live action. Yeah. We got to see the battle damaged Vader. Yes. Okay, a couple things I'm going to say. Yeah. One, this whole series, this six episodes, you could cut half of these, <laughs> re-edit it into a movie, yeah. and it would be decent. And some would probably will. And and it's I can tell you this, hours. and you can cut the first, cut, by the way, cut the first lightsaber duel out. Oh, because No, because okay. it's meaningless, because here's why. That Vader yeah. goes from being the guy who's elderly patient in the first three episodes of this. Yeah. I'm going to make him burn. Yeah. I'm not, I'm going to let him escape because I'm going to make sure he burns. Yeah. And ends up being a guy that can't pull down a second ship <laughs> and thinks that he won by yeah. throwing some rocks on him. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. Exactly. That's the thing is that. What is that about? I think that, that it comes down to, and, and we, we talked about this briefly, and so I won't, I won't go deep into, but like, but that's my fundamental problem with the prequels is not. What most people probably did. My problem is you how they have established who Anakin Skywalker was and what he was like, and who Vader is and what Vader is like. And I don't see that they're the same person. Oh, now I really oh I don't well, well that is you always get flashes. Been my problem with you get flashes things. of how it connects, but it's it's so disjointed. Yeah, it's so sporadic. Yeah, that I really don't understand it. And I mean, really, that sixth episode. I, I, I'm as much as I love the fan service yeah. and I love the beauty, yeah. the story part of it sucks. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it does not connect the dots on any of no, this. No, none of that. None of the things of like, how did, why did, where did, because the, the best part of the entire six thing was, I, in my opinion, is the the end of that fight between the two of the battle. Dance yes. And Vader. The, like, the dialogue. Where, the yes. dialogue. Exactly. Like, like that, uh, in, in terms of star Wars lines, one of the best, lines in all of modern star wars is you didn't kill anakin skywalker yes, right i did i did and it was like oh, no. that's it that like that what a what a great insight into the character like that's just beautiful and perfect and and horrifying and dark and like oh my god I, that's exactly what i liked and then undercut by then he goes back to the the you know the 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 dark fortress of evil on the planet where he got horribly massacred, mutilated. Sure, of sure. course you build a summer sure. home there. And then the emperor <laughs> gets, he gets on the emperor. And like, oh, we can see Ian McDermott. Yay! And he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find Kenobi. I'm gonna hunt him down. I'm gonna do this stuff. And then the emperor just goes, but will you? Oh, and he's oh like, my oh my god, you're right. Sorry, boss. Never mind. Never, Kenobi's which, dead. No. What? Yeah, no. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> that was it. Was the it was the weakest? Like. Mm, are so, you sure? Like, okay, just because you brought him up. Yeah. Let me ask you this. I know I'm not I'm not crapping on the talent of people who make these programs and make these. Movies. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm not trying to. Hey, I, I think it is, is a hard job. Is there no one who can who can sufficiently replicate Ian McDermott's makeup from 1983? <laughs> because my God, yeah. what is the pr- what is the problem? I, I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, it, it's, it's, he's, I'm serious. He's, he's turning into much more of a melted candle he every time he shows he up. He never looks. There is not one moment you ever see him in Revenge of the Sith, in Empire Strikes Back, in the cutscene in 1983 or this yeah. that you think that's the same character. Yeah. What is the problem with that? Yeah. Like, honestly, that was a moment where I was like, oh, my God, he came back. 
Oh, wait. Why? Is this is, looks ridiculous. Yeah. Film it from the same angle as Empire Strikes Back right? and just duplicate that. And, and d- did he need to be on Hollow? No. Like, are you kidding? I mean, even if, even if you could, if, if let's say Ian was still in England and they shot him, you could still put him in. No, it's, I got to tell you, that, that was disturbing. Yeah. And maybe not for the right reasons, right? Okay. <laughs> but let me go back to Anakin. I'm still and Hayden. I love Hayden Christensen. Yeah. He's and this we were so amazing. excited that like he was back. And I'm he was still excited. Thing. And that moment, you're right. And that speaks. That was make no mistake. Yeah. That was a that was an a, a, an amazing moment yeah. to have to to and not only to relieve Obi Wan of yeah. the guilt. No, yeah. I did this because this is the character I've been yeah. the whole time. It goes all the way back to that kid in Episode One. I totally yeah. get that. Yep. How does Obi Wan make the same mistake of of leaving him for dead yeah. in a ditch? Yeah. If he had just said, you know what, that's it. We're done now. You're dead. Yeah. Slice. Yeah. The rest of all the suffering doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, how does that, how does that happen Obi-Wan again? Obi-Wan messes up again. Again. I mean, this is, this is, okay, so this is where, oh, I didn't expect that I was going to give praise to J.J. Abrams, but I'm about to. Right? Because he did this moment better in Force Awakens. Because... He had a, a a literal rift between the two characters. They couldn't fight each other. Here, there's no reason why that fight should have stopped. But right. in, in Force Awakens, he legitimately had like, let's crack the, the planet open. Now they can't fight anymore. So yes. we have to we have to like go to our separate corners and we'll meet again. There's nothing stopping there him nothing from ending this final. Either of them. Like, like, seriously, like, it should have been like a Monty Python moment. Like, I'm going to cut off your yeah. one good arm. Yes. I'm going to put you on my back. <laughs> yes. And we're going to take you to a place and I'm going to, and I'm going to give you one final chance to change this or you're done. He could have stood up on a rock and said, I have the high ground Oh my again. God. Well, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Did you not think when he, when he broke the ground and Obi-Wan sank He's looking down, like, and he wasn't oh. going to be like, I have the high ground now, which yeah. I mean, like, okay, yeah. I, that was probably too much. Cause we did get the hello there we later on. The hello right? there, yeah. So, okay. I don't understand the Anakin. I don't, and it's not, again, not Hayden's fault. No. It, this is, I just like, don't get what, what they, they were doing. If they had done six episodes of Vader, you know, and like you got to see from like, from his perspective, like, like episode three ends. No. And then Vader episode one is like five minutes later. You know, and then you got to see yes. how he started a, a, like a pogrom essentially to wipe out all the, you know, to, to help this thing. And then you got this. This would be the counterpoint to that. But well, without that part, I, like, I still don't get it. Like, I still look at the, the swashbuckling Anakin from the start. Like, you know, like, this is where the fun begins. That yes. guy, three days later, he is in black armor murdering children. Yes. What? You're right. What, what are you talking about? That doesn't make that. And so and then to take that to here, it's still there's fundamental things that have changed that I don't understand. No. What it is. And it, it makes me angry because it's a it's a waste of bringing Hayden back. I, I don't. And again, take out half of the half of the show and tighten it into just a two hour movie. Yeah, you really could. And it would and, and it'd be a lot more Hayden. Yeah. The percentage of Hayden would yeah. go up and it would make we a lot more sense. Kumal, but yeah, you know. He's got he's, okay. he's an eternal, but and I, he got mentioned in Miss Marvel, so I, you know King is still out there. Sh- <laughs> okay, so now let me right. let me so here here I'm going to come to now the I'm going to come to the really crazy part. Okay, when you go back on a show that has its future already committed, yes, you have to decide very clearly how you're going to do certain things in the story you're going to tell. I love the girl who plays Princess Leia in this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's now things that make no sense. Yeah. And and it's not like you guys didn't know yeah. what you were leading towards, right? You can't if if you're gonna do a season two of the show, yeah. here's the deal. You can't have Leia in You do well, no no no, you do. You do the oh. time jump, okay, you go another four or five years. You get Millie Bobby Brown in. She's Princess Leia now. Now and, and you as make, a surly teenager. And you're super Ugh. well wait, and you super Alec Guinness up Ewan McGregor. Okay. So that you White make hair. that transition, you make yeah. that transition, right? Yeah. And you have them wherever it leads them. They have to have the conversation where he has to look at her and say, "Hey, listen, mm-hmm. I have great, you know, I care for you, like you're my own daughter. I have great, but you can never talk to me ever again. You can never call me Ben. 
you can never, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's gotta be a moment where it jives yeah. with everything that happens yeah. because, in, in a new hope. Because the, I was trying to remember when, I, when, when they were having their goodbye and I was like trying in my head to play back what their message was, which, which is general Kenobi. Yeah. You served my father in the clone war. And it's like, how about, Hey Ben, remember when you saved me from the slavers? Right. Yes. Like, what? Uh, well, wait, well, wait, and even go back to that. Like, hey, imagine you were ten years old, and then nine years later, you meet the old guy that saved you from the Sith witch yeah. who was chunting you down in the desert. <laughs> yeah. Who then the day later comes back with the one freaking toy that you still have. <laughs> nine years later, you don't think of that guy as just that old weird Ben wizard in the woods? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, guys, what are you and, doing? But yeah, the other, the other thing is, is there, there's a couple things they had to do, which I feel like they didn't do. And that's you had to establish why is he still on the planet when he knows everything is terrible out there and he could help. And they didn't. They actually made it worse because they oh, yes. showed all these people. Look at all these people you helped and the rebellion is starting and these people are like refugees. And you're like, <laughs> nope. Desert life well, for no, me. No, seriously. And you had to have that that Vader thought that Obi-Wan was dead. And you didn't do that either. You're telling me in the next 10 years, he never once looked well, okay. around to try and so find him? No, no, no. And it, didn't look for, like, his own family, like, where he grew up? Here's he another him? thing you got to deal with because in A New Hope. I know he doesn't like sand. Uh, well, that is true. But. It gets in there. It gets everywhere. Yeah. Now, they're going to have to deal with in season two. They're going to have to resolve the whole idea of why does Vader think he's dead? Yeah. Because, I mean... There has to be. And wait a minute. Don't tell me. And this is this is what I'm going to say is there should not be a season two. They wrapped it all up. It's uh -huh. fine. Leave it where it is unless you're going to do something. And I'm getting ready to open up uh -huh. that box that you're not going to believe. Yeah. Because because here's my point. It's you wrapped it up. Qui-Gon shows up. Everything. Yeah, yeah it's fine. So you're waiting it, for that. It, just just. Yeah, it's there. He did it. He looked great. I'm here all yeah. the time. I've been here all the yeah. time, yeah. which is kind of weird, but yeah, sure. Which is, which, it, which is the typical passive aggressive force ghost nonsense. Sure. You sure. To. It's fine. Like, okay. But I got to tell you, you guys have set up so much stuff. Like, where's that holster? What does she do yeah. with it? Right. The, the, you, you introduce something yeah. that you know doesn't exist in A New Hope. Yeah. So here it is. <laughs> I, think there, I think there's a plan. I, I don't know if there's a plan, but I'm going to tell you this. You know what I want them to do? What? Just go all in redo episodes four, five, and six with this cast. Four, five, and six? Yes. You redo it all. What? You bring Ewan McGregor and just redo them. You okay. go ahead and redo them. Bring it. Bring in Aiden, Ed, 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 the guy who played Solo, the kid who played oh, Solo yeah, yeah. from Solo. Aiden Unruh. Bring in, bring in Danny Glover. Bring in, bring in Ewan McGregor. Don, in, Donald Glover. D Donald Danny Glover. Is, who is, I said? Who, who, is who, who, 80s. Did, did, Danny, who did I say? Danny yeah, Glover? Danny Glover does, uh, Danny uh, is, is not way it. too old for this shit. <laughs> I misspoke. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not kidding. I'm going to tell you this. Because you guys have gone back with nostalgia, which this is going to pivot into our other conversation yeah. about another franchise. Uh -huh. You guys have boxed yourselves into such a weird corner of a box. Yeah. You know what? No. Do what you've been wanting to do. D redo the whole Lucas <laughs> thing. Just redo <laughs> it. I'm not kidding. At this point... Go ahead and yeah. and bring in Hayden and and do the flashbacks so that now you can do a richer and new hope and it'll all make sense. It won't look any more jarring now when you watch Rogue One and it'll actually make sense. And deep fake Carrie Fisher onto Millie Bobby Brown. <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown can do Leia for those three movies. Sure she could. And you'll get all the Stranger Things kids who, who are fans of that to watch it. And it'll bring Star Wars to a whole other new generation. Okay. All right. So I'm going to uh, accept your premise. Yes. As 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 not being uh, completely sacrilegious and and George nothing sacrilegious. Nothing matters anymore. George Lucas would, would would he doesn't care. He doesn't own it. It's not his. I know, but but he would he would do a Roy Disney and like come after them if they tried to read it. But that being said, there is a way to do that. I think, and that's to make it a television series. Because they've Whoa. already done it, way back in the in the in the eighties, in the dark period, that the the post of the Jedi when no Star Wars was happening, they went back on uh, Minnesota Public Radio and they did a George Lucas approved 
expanded version of oh, there's a books new that hope. have done that. Yes, yeah, that's but, true. but basically, it's but it's with Mark Hamill. I mean, like they, I mean, like they, they got people yes. back and they did, and they expanded the story, so you got to see Luke going to Tashi Station. I mean, like you got to see um, Leia on Alderaan with her father dealing with the Empire before she got yes. on the Cantive V4. All, everything is expanded. Like, what was Han Solo doing right before yes. he left? Yes! All that stuff. Do it. So to do that, yeah, now I'm interested. Do it. Listen, here's the deal. Expand it. Like, the whole, but, like, no. tell, and, and, like, it's, like, it's, ten, it's like 12 episodes and for each, uh, epi- you know, for each. Um, Absolutely. Movies, and I, New and, Hope. And, and, and I'm not saying you change anything. No, you just make expand it, it. You make it. Ex- you expand it. You make it richer. Yeah, and you bring it up to date. Yeah, and here's the deal: the original trilogy will always live in our hearts as the inspiration where this all began. <laughs> sure. Yeah, they're not. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Right. But you want to know what? Yeah. You guys have ruined it. <laughs> well, you've ruined it. I seriously. This is I, the weird back and forth of the of the nostalgia thing, which I know this is what we have to we have to talk about. Is yes. To pivot off is is that. The the what they're what they're seeing what they're learning what is there are the wrong lessons they they keep going back to the same time because they're basically going for the holy trilogy they're doing stuff out of there like everything is is about those doesn't... characters in there and they're telling stories that have predetermined endings and they're not going with like like okay so Andor is coming okay like we know that dude dies yes thing too so like what. What story are you telling? No, here? Ex- I, 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 again, because I know it. But unless it's going towards something new, yeah. And the way you, the what's new is redo the original trilogy. <laughs> no, I, I redo mean, it. They, you can point to Andor and go, well, what about Better Call Saul? And you're like, okay, you know what? I get it. I mean, I don't think pre- yeah, but prequel stuff is inherently bad. But the way Star Wars is doing it, it's all just. Because they think this is what fans, the only thing that fans will like. And the reception of Solo is is what they use to, to that's the stick that they beat yeah, us with geez. to go, we tried to do something and you guys didn't like it. So clearly the message is deep fake Luke. And I think that's the wrong lesson. Because tell me people wouldn't be just as excited at seeing Sebastian Stan in the in Well, the exactly, with exactly. Your, stop with the CG stuff. We are and, okay with stretching our imaginations. Well, no, I mean, I mean, you've done it. I think I want, I think that Aiden Eidenreck, how do I yeah, say that? Yeah, I think it? that's right. And D- uh, Donald Glover. Yeah. I, I think they did it. Yeah. Millie Bobby Brown could do it for, for Leia. Yeah, and I think we'd be fine with it. Absolutely. Like, especially to give them a chance to do a performance as opposed to us watching it going, that's not a real person. Redo the whole trilogy. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, serious. Like, when they get to do the prequel trilogy again, call me because I have some ideas. I've rewritten episode one already. I have a full screenplay <laughs> see, of what I wanted episode one to be because that's but, the kind of entitled fan. But no, I, 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 of course. Now, here's, here's where we now pivot. Okay, so in the end... It was good. I don't need more. No, everybody I, I, did. It. I, I, there's, there's, there are Star Wars stories. I am interested in them telling and 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 and, and you've done this. Okay, great. You got them all back. It, it is what it, it is. What it was. Sure. And let it be done. Now, here's a weird thing. This is where I find myself in 2022 at the time yes. of recording. Right. There is another show mm-hmm. that is basically doing the same thing. Yeah. It's filling in blanks at an earlier part. Of a very well-known story in a very well-known franchise. Yeah. And I love it. And yes, it's Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I, why is it, why they are busting canon. Yes. They are changing canon. Absolutely. They're doing this. Now, there's a theory as to why that is. Okay. The theory is that, because I have a couple people and I have a couple friends on Facebook that I even saw say this, because I said, oh my God, I love the show. And they were like, oh, I hate the show because it, it's, it has nothing in line of what the original series was. <laughs> and I said, but do you understand the original series doesn't exist anymore? That canon's gone. I actually have a theory. Uh, that, I, I, I wish you were right, but I don't know. No, no, no. Go I got to tell you this. I'm really wondering, and I've seen other people talk about this, and I am so bought into this. Mm. We Everything you've seen since Star Trek First Contact is the Cochran timeline. It's not the original series timeline. It's not Star Trek's one through six. No, they it changed when they went back in time and helped Cochran make the first warp speed flight and everything you've seen. That's why Enterprise, that's why Scott Bakula's Enterprise does not look like it leads into the original series Enterprise <laughs> because it's actually different. I'm okay with that. 
and I got to tell you if, you, if you if you go down the deep rabbit hole of <laughs> theories on this and speculation, there is a speculation that that is why they're bringing the cast back for third season of Picard. Mm. Because they are actually going to finally address that everything you've been watching for the last 20 years is not the original series timeline. Hmm. But but they were you're saying like the that that next generation was and then everything after No, next gen- everything up till first contact is the original series timeline. Okay. Next so, generation. So Voyager is not then you're so, saying. Yeah, correct. There whatever goes so through So it went forward and backward? It, no, so there is before so. there is a moment. Well, Enterprise. Well, I know it's not your theory. Well, no, 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 no. Wait, so Enterprise. Enterprise the came out. Is. Enterprise came out after. Did Enterprise yes. come out during First Contact? Right when First Contact happened. Mm, I think it was a little later. Yeah, it's it's not it was UPN time. It's different. UPN it's was. it's a different universe. It's like the Kelvin universe. Okay. It's 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 totally different, and that's why anybody. And my whole point in this, not to not to create that force fire, <laughs> but to say is, yeah. I'm okay with this not lining up to 67 track. Yeah. I, I don't care. I, 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 I like this new show so much. Yes. That I, I wish that they would diverge more. And, and here's my point. But I don't know that they're allowed to. Well, well, that's what kind see, of annoys me. And here's where, here's where I got, this is where I found myself as a fan yeah. that I don't know how to say this. Yeah. Why am I okay with Strange New Worlds breaking all these conventions, yeah. and I can't get past someone not instantly dying when they get impaled with a lightsaber through the yeah. chest. Yes, yeah. Okay, so I think I have a theory about that, because I've been thinking about this too. So there is, uh, now obviously we are in both camps. We are the Venn diagram, we are in the middle. So there yes. are Star Wars fans, there are Star Trek fans. I don't think there's a lot of overlap, but, but, but at the time that we grew up, there was not a lot of sci-fi. So, sure. like, if you if someone had a laser sword, right. or you know had a had a, a, a fuzzy friend uh, who was an alien, you watched that. Sure. No matter what it was, we watched some terrible. Te- I mean, we watched Masters of the Universe in theaters. Like, I mean, you know, that's what we had. I had to explain this to my daughter. I was like, I, mean, I show these terrible movies. I'm like, this is it. Like for the year, this is what we got. <laughs> you are so spoiled for choice. You guys all don't remember that. Like, there was Galactica. Battlestar yeah, Galactica. Yes, and we watched every and, episode. And we watched every episode. Of, that's what we had. And then and then it died pretty yeah, quickly. Pretty quickly. Because then Galactica 1980, and that's horrible. Yeah. We all talk about how much we love Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Yeah. We only love the first season of that show. Yeah. That's yeah. it. I mean, I talk about Auto Man. You talk about Manimal. Right. You talk about Street Hawk. I mean, like, this is what we had, people. You, and you guys don't realize how much love we've squeezed yes. out of a very small amount of content. Yes. Right? Because yeah. that's what the, we had. That my mother used to say that anytime that I loved a show, she knew it wouldn't make it for, for the, the season finale. Like so many shows are like, oh man, Tales of the Gold Monkey canceled. What? I mean, I, I yeah, it, it's that was the time they were just trying everything, and that's what we had. So, I think that the big difference is is that by sort of what the Star Wars fans have said, because every time something changed, like you know, the reception to Last Jedi is a is a great example sure, of sure. this. Ryan Johnson says, let the past die, kill it if you have to. And J.J. Abrams says, no, but I love the past. I want to do Return of the Jedi again. And everybody goes, oh. So there's this weird contradiction of like, what do you want? And apparently what we want is the Mandalorian. (laughs) Because it's like the Mandalorian, new character, but using the same, playing in the same sandbox, using the same toys, literally toys, like the, right. the trip carry shows up and there's toys. It's the, you're, you're playing the notes of nostalgia. Yes. Now, there's nothing against, I have nothing against The Mandalorian. I think it's a great show. I think what they're doing. But the more they play those notes and it overshadows the, the original composition, the more that John Williams overrides the yeah. Ludwig. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. The more concerned I get because Book of Boba Fett shows what happens when right. you give the fans exactly what they want. That doesn't it doesn't work. Right. So there's a weird thing with the Star Wars fans. Now, Star Trek fans, I think in general, want the new. They are not as nostalgic for all the old stuff. They want something different because every time something new comes out, a new Star Trek comes out, it's different. I mean, like, the Enterprise is different from Voyager. It's different from sure, New Space Nine. Sure. It's a different from New... I mean, every time it comes out, it's, it's, it's still Star Trek, which is great. There's this consistency of, of intelligence and, and big ideas and, and characters who are not usually flawed uh, and the, going about this thing. When 
people try to go back and play the fan, like the, the play the hits, play the nostalgia, play that stuff. Fans of Star Trek hate it. Star Trek Into Darkness is the lowest reviewed film in Star Trek history because J.J. Abrams tried to play the nostalgia thing that he yeah. did later on in Star Wars Force Awakens. I know that comes later. Sure. He tried to play those same notes to Star Trek fans, and they said, hell no. Well, and also he lied, fl- blatant lied yes. about it yes. during the promotion of that. But right. Yes. I mean, like you, get, like, regardless of whatever box office stuff, too, like that is, if you go into any Star Trek fan thing, that is the lowest rated of all the Star Trek films. People like Star Trek V more than they like Into Darkness because he tried to play that nostalgia thing and they're like, no, no. we don't want this. Right. This like you, you want oh, fine, you want to take Kirk and Spock and have them go to adventures? Great. You don't get to just do Star Trek two in your shitty way. Yeah, right. Or <laughs> like, reverse you know, it, reverse roll it or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. You don't just it. get yeah, to you don't just get to like remix right. that. That's not yours. Right. And so and they there was a universal just like no And and you know what? And great point about that. Align that with Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Star Trek Into Darkness has some of the most spectacular visual effects yeah. of any Star Trek movie. It's gorgeous. And and the, there and, are gorgeous moments the, in that movie. And the and the core crew are on point. Yes. They have exactly. gotten past the initial stuff. They are like they are they totally are totally great. Po- exactly. Great. That's exactly it. But yes. they're pl- but they're doing the same right. stuff over there. And uh, it, it, you get I could get big into that about how much it breaks Star Trek canon and stuff. Sure. And, and messes and there's even there I think the how it should have ended addressed a bunch of that about like how the sun, the changes about like, oh, this is now how transporters work, and this is how Kirk uh, Khan's blood works. Fundamentally, would alter everything about Star Trek if you if you well, if you follow those lines out. But we don't have to. But, get wait, into wait, that, but, but, that. but amusing, Strange New Worlds has changed how transporters work. Yeah, yeah, and everybody's like, no, all right. I uh, <laughs> so, see. So right. So then, so then, Star Trek goes away. Star Trek comes back after the after the Kelvin. So the Kelvin timeline apparently is going on still. Yeah. Who knows? Even though nobody went to see beyond. Well, I have a theory about that, yeah. but we'll talk. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> um, so it comes back, and now it's it's um it's um streaming. It's I don't know what the the golden age of stream. Like the, basically, it comes back, and it's broodier. It's grittier. They swear now, right. and 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 everybody goes, uh, this this really isn't Star Trek. Like I don't know. Are what you talking about doing. Discovery? Just Disco- yeah, so yeah, Star Trek Discovery. Discovery. So right. Star Trek Discovery, and the Discovery is this isn't what people want from Star Trek. And so <laughs> the first, and so I have nothing against Brian Fuller. I think he's one of the best sure. TV guys around. He did not get to do what he wanted to do, and then was fired halfway through the first season. And a new group was brought in, and then they did the second half of the Discovery's first season, and then they were fired. And then another group was brought in for the second season, and then they were fired. Like it's, it's like why well, didn't there was that much change? Yeah, really. behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, like basically the the top guys still there. But the showrunners, over and over again, they're like, nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Until I would say probably midway through the second season, it started to get really good. And I'd say the third season, I'd say, is probably one of the strongest. Because right. they finally like went, now we know what the show is. Right. And what they discovered was it's Star Trek. It took them two seasons to go, yeah. oh, wait. What people want from Star Trek is smart, confident people working together well to solve gigantic problems. Not angst. Not brooding, not betrayal, like right. all that stuff. Like they, they people they, who still have issues. Yeah, but but they, they, still, they but, still but, issues, but they're right. working through it. Yeah, right, they're exactly. That out. So because and, and and how traumatic is it now? In the in the last season of Star Trek, one of the fundamental things is, hey, we've all been traumatized, and we need to figure out how to deal with this. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. this is what Counselor Troy was telling us way back in generation. Oh, this time. is true. This so, is totally true. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And so the, by the time then you get to all these things to get to Strange New Worlds, it's it's a throwback in terms of tone because it's hopeful again. Oh, absolutely. And it's and once again, it's a it's a crew of brilliant people working together to solve all this stuff. Like there is no tension between you know the captain and number one. They might have disagreements and stuff too, but they are on the same team, same page. They are going oh. forward. There's not there's not you have to worry about, you know, <laughs> getting stabbed in the back. Now, once again, I now I want to say I love Star Trek Discovery. I've watched every episode. Sure, sure. And and it is my daughter's Star Trek. Sure. She absolutely, it's her number one show. I've shown her a bunch of other stuff. Nothing has really caught her the same way that Discovery has. So I'm not saying anything gets it, but I'm saying they had a long time to figure out what that show was before they rediscovered what made Star Trek Star Trek. And I think this Trades New Worlds benefits from that because they already know what hit the ground running because from the first episode, which was a little shaky, um, from there, they have just been flying. Oh, no. I'm, oh, I'm sold since day one of, Star, of Strange New Worlds. Did I make my point or did I? Oh, no, I you did. No, 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 okay. no, no. And, I, and I'm going to add to it in that I, I think it's one. I think it's amazing 
that Paramount, but even Disney has done the same thing, has yeah. invested the money and the time yeah. to get there. Yeah, because, because Star Trek was n- never Star Wars. Right. And, and never designed to be. And you and you know that, like, again, I think it's shocking how good these first seven episodes of Strange New Worlds have been. But I got to say, as much as I love my continuity, mm-hmm. this is the best designed Starship Starship Enterprise ever. Yeah. It's the best designed bridge. Yeah. It's the best designed sets. Yeah. It's the best designed uniforms. Yeah. The only the, thing I have is, is is the is the using the the volume to do the the uh, the tri- the energy engine room. I was like, I, I like, and I said, oh, I'm like, it should be this big well, because because yeah. when you True. think of it in terms of like. Scotty crawling through the the, the Jeffrey yes. studio, and I'm like, how the hell is he but supposed fa- to get to like okay. one of those pieces? But the to, fact to that fix they something. well, the, the fact that they use the Jeffrey tubes in the, in yeah. the I mean, I'm actually very impressed with yeah. that. Listen, it's I can't say enough about the characters. Yeah, Anson Mount is crushing it. Yes. Jess Bush, yeah. that nurse Chapel yeah. is. But phenomenal. Yeah, she is one of the best new characters that Star Trek has. I mean, and, and such complexity yeah. that you know is coming that they yeah. really have started to scratch the surface of. Yeah. The helmsman, the yeah. helmsman, well, I mean, what's yeah. her, uh, her name? I forget. Uh, yeah, I can't remember it either. Okay. I'm still, still, uh, I'm still learning. I'm we, still we, learning. We get to, I feel like if we get to a certain point, I have a hard time retaining new character names in any show. Well, no, but I got to tell you, the, the reason is because I think I told you this. I'm so into the show. Playmates, where are the figures? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because right. I'm ready for the action figures. I'm yeah. ready for that enterprise. Yeah. I'm ready for all that. I love everything about this show. I love the music. Yep. I love all of it. The fact that they're going, and they, no spoilers here because we, we talked about this. We're, sure. we're dealing we're dealing with, with episodes one through seven. Yep. The fact that they have teased the Gorn and yes. didn't show you them yes. yet. That, I, that episode... I think maybe my top 10 of all time. Yes. I, that episode, it was a bottle episode, which I was like, they're doing this already? A bottle episode? Really? Are you having some money problems? But that, it was so, it was a submarine thriller. It was tension. It was, I loved everything about it. It showed the crew at their best doing all oh. these different things to try and get, and, and, Amazing captaincy, like yes, I love Pike, but like in that one, he's just at a whole nother level. My oh, only, God, was that, I love that episode so much. My only negative Maybe was watch it again to see if it, if it, it in the seventh it episode, the, second time. the ship got taken over a little bit too easily. Yeah, I agree. But but you know what though? But there was th- that Angel, that Captain Angel. Yeah. She's a character we're obviously going to get to. Yeah, again. I, was, I, I my only problem with her was she was so good as the counselor having a conversation with Spock when she flipped to supervillain. Way camped it up, and I was oh, like, yeah, "Oh, course. okay." They got crazy. Like, yeah, it was, yes. it was like it was like, "Oh, you were doing so good at the nuance thing, but when you got to be like, oh, now I get to be like a villain." All right, like to bring it back down. Like we're still we're still Star oh, Trek yeah. oh, here. No, we no. don't we don't go that big. You're not Ricardo Montalban. Well, well, like but, bring it down. But I got to tell you though, bold in that it's funny that that's the episode. Yeah. That in the last three seconds of the episode, you learn that we are going to meet Cybok. Yeah. And that her character is related to Cybok. Yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah. Can you tell me what what type of balls does it take <laughs> yes. for a show in its first season <laughs> yeah. to go, yeah, we're going to take one of the most maligned characters in the history of the cinematic Star Trek universe, yep. and we're going to bring them front and center, people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah, it is. That is balls. And I think part of it, I was actually thinking about this, specifically that, that moment, is because there are so few recurring villains in Star Trek because they usually just resolve them. Sure. Because like that, you don't get to like, you know, the species was species eight, four, seven, two yeah. established in, in, in Voyager as being the ultimate, Oh, they're, they can kill Borg so easily. And like three episodes later, they're like running simulations of Boothby at, <laughs> on Star Trek thinking like, Oh no, we're just misunderstood. It's like, Oh, okay. Like, but you could have yeah. kept them around a little. Yeah. Every time that there's any type of big threat, they tend to just like go, oh, we just need to talk to them and resolve it. And so you have, you have Cybok, you have Khan, and there aren't really a whole, and there's Harry Mud. Mud, 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 of course. Yeah, but there's not really a whole lot of other big names. So the fact they brought it in, I think, is fantastic. I cannot wait to see where that goes. Well, okay. I hope he actually shows up this season and, and they didn't just like tease that he's out there. Now, oh, no, of course. Here's here's then then this leads into my same I can't believe I'm going to bring this to the same space I left the Star Wars conversation. I love this so much. And I still I'm okay with the whole this is a different timeline everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I I get I I got to be honest with you. I want the I want I, more of that. I think they can do a few seasons of this. 
I think they can change Pike's destiny. I hope so. Well, wait, because here's my here's my point. Yeah. Guess what I think they can do? What? I think they can do the original series over. They're bringing in Kirk. If they did four or five seasons of this, yeah, do the five year mission, yeah. Pike maybe gets a he gets some something can change because I don't think this is the same universe. Sure. If they took the three seasons of the original series mm -hmm. and redid those episodes mm -hmm. with this Enterprise, yes. this with set, this Spock, with this Spock, with this Uhura, let me tell you something. And upped the script, upped the tension, yes. the storytelling. Yes. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. I'm in for that. Yeah, me too. I would, I'm I would, all in for I would, that. I would, I would love that. What? I would love that. Wait. Because but, that's the thing is I, I've never shown those Star Trek to my daughter, even though they're because you can't, because you, you can't, because you can't show that Gorn. You can't show Kirk fighting the Gorn, Gorn yeah, or, with a paper mache or boulder. Spock's brain, you, you or I mean, any of the. You can't show that. Yeah. Wait a minute. Do you realize what we're saying? What are we saying? We're saying that they can remake the original Star Trek series. Yeah. And I said earlier uh -huh. they can remake the original Star Wars trilogy. <laughs> What has happened to us? Multiverse, baby. Multiverse. I mean, like at, at this point, uh, I, I think that we we have a different relationship with remakes and stuff now because the other ones don't go away, and there the, and the emotions you have with them don't go away. We saw Battlestar Galactica when we were kids, and because it, it was it was you know riding that Star Wars coattails, and we liked it, but at the same time, New Battlestar comes out in two thousand three or whatever it is, and it's and it's fantastic. Uh, and we love it, and that's it. And if they did Battlestar again, I'd watch it again. And here's they may. They and may. Here, and here's the thing. What did I say? What was the one of the lines here? Nostalgic fan service yeah. versus canon busting nostalgia. Yeah. Canon busting nostalgia wins. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Like I, at this point, I, I love a, I love the continuing universe. I love the Marvel universe. I love all the the calls and nods and 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 callbacks and that kind of stuff. But if they brought in a multiverse Captain America, okay, sure, great, sure, sure, new guy in the suit, fine. Yeah, I like I, you know I we 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 got over the new roadie you know <laughs> they've made the switch before in terms Tom of Cruise is on a high right now Tom Cruise can come in he can be well, the captain. Say, well, he can I, be Iron Man I really think that there is that thing I think that, but I, I don't know if Star Wars is allowed to do that seriously I I will say I just cannot believe how much I love Strange New Worlds yeah I think I was telling you this before we started recording. In the last several years now, of the of the maturity of the of our fandom streaming experience, yeah. there are three shows that I have woken up on the <laughs> days that they come out every episode, yeah. eagerly anticipating the next episode. Yeah. And I'm going to be very honest; they are WandaVision, Loki, and Strange New Worlds. Yeah, I'm actually not kidding. That's it. Yeah, I, other, I got up. I got up excited for today for the last episode of Obi Wan. Yeah, because we. Knew. I I didn't do that for the. For the middle four episodes, yeah, I would say for for most of those ones, I, I it was my first. I like say that that's where I had my breakfast. That's what I was. That's what I was watching. You know, because I wanted the first thing. But mostly, it was because I didn't want to be spoiled. Sure. I mean, like Strange New Worlds. I, I mean, nobody nobody's really people aren't talking about it as much as I think they should. Be it's unbelievable it's to me. So good. And do you know what's sad is the people that I've said this to, where I said, you know, like it'll come up in conversation, and I'll say, oh, you should watch Strange New Worlds. Yeah. Do you know how many people give me the grimace? <laughs> and because you know why because here's what they go oh, star trek uh, yeah that shows you one how how trash the brand has been yeah. after all this time yeah which is unfortunate because my god it was only 09 when we had the the kelvin sh movie which was excellent yeah. and right yeah wow i mean give it a chance yeah because i really think you're gonna love it like yeah. By the time you get to that second and third episode, this is a series you care about the characters. Yes. You love what is going on. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's 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 that rare show, and I would actually say similar to Firefly, because Firefly did this good job of establishing the strong personalities of the characters. Where when you have a situation, put any two characters together, I'm on board. I'm invested. Yeah, I'm not just waiting for Spock to show up again. Right, like any of the thing. And and I would say Discovery now is that at that point. Oh, too. oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, like I, I love I love that crew. Put so the much. doctor, the, yes. that doctor, yes. phenomenal. Yeah, the Helms, the Helms woman. Yeah, th absolutely. Any two of them on any put Chapel thing. with any yes. of the characters, and I'm in. Yes, yes. Yeah. I and and even even just and even having Pike, just how he yes. deals with it. Yeah. Anytime, any combination, and that's really, really hard to do. Yes. Any any of the shows that start out with an ensemble, like you sort of go, 
freaking can this I tell guy this? again. Can I, can I, can I, uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll close with this with my comments on this. Okay. I think most people probably, the, you know, if you were a fan of, of, of fandom in the 90s and stuff, it was all about the intro titles, right? Mm, Which, yes. by the way, uh-huh. A lot right. of like like Obi Wan, nothing. Yeah, it's I know it's some chords it's, it, and yeah, a sand, it's like, right? It's like one quarter of the actual song that John and, Williams wrote. And let me just say this: um, I think most people, surprisingly, might maybe disagree. Voyager had the best Star Trek intro titles. Yeah, I'm, I'm my my ride or die is, is Deep Space Nine, but Voyager had no, it. Voyager was that amazing. Song like, was amazing. The Actually, song, the ship. I think the Prodigy opening thing. Which well, no, Prodigy probably, is great. Probably prodigy the best thing great. about that. But I think that's riffing off of Voyager. But I honestly think Strange New Worlds is the best. There are shots of it the hits ship. That note. Yeah, that we've never seen before. We've never seen in 50 it years is of Star so Trek. We've never seen. And I'm just I I uh, okay, this maybe this this turned into a love fest for Strange New Worlds. I mean, fine. Bottom line is figure it out everybody. But it also I think I think I, I know you're you're wrapping up, but sure. I think the the quality of Strange New Worlds is different in that it's the rising tide that raises all boats, as opposed to Kenobi. Yes. Like, like basically, it's making Star Trek better. Is Kenobi making Star Wars better? Ooh, no, not really. I mean, it's it's sort of you. Just, oh wow! Wait right? a minute. See now, that's my point. Yeah, it's it, not. It's not making. Okay, first of all, here's here's the problem. Yeah, what is it doing? It's making me love Ian McGregor more yeah. as Obi Wan Kenobi yeah. and Hayden Christensen and Hayden Christensen. Yeah, it's giving it's giving them certainly Hayden yeah. props for the garbage he took for episodes two and three. Yes. So okay, that that's done that. Yeah. Does it make me enjoy a New Hope more? No, no. absolutely not. No, absolutely not. No. But I can tell you, Strange New World has made me look back at the at the Star Trek that they're trying to emulate, the original yes. Star Trek, and I was like, oh yeah, you know what? Yeah, they actually had, like, because they're playing the same, they're using the same instruments, even though they're playing a different song. They can redo the entire original series. <laughs> I would be fine with that. I would be, if they announce a new Kirk, I mean, I'd be excited. And do you know what you call that show? What? A new Bones? Oh, my God. What? Oh, my. Right? Okay, uh, what do you call that show? Come on. Do you have something already? To boldly go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's what that show is called. Yeah. I mean, are are you kidding? Yeah. Like Oh man. Like to, to yeah, even if they if they officially establish it's not Dad's Kirk. Like that yes. those existed, they're fine, they're over there, but this is those This voyages, is the Cochrane. I call, I'm calling it the Cochrane timeline. Yeah. It is, and it is all thanks to those knuckleheads from the 23rd century that had to go back and fix the board problem. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah. it makes sense. And yeah. then you bring them all together for the fourth movie, <laughs> for the fourth Kelvin timeline, and then they straighten it all out. I, don't put that on that movie. Oh, no, I won't do that. Let, let oh, that yeah. be. Let that be. Uh, well, how is George? How's George Kirk coming back? How is he coming back oh. with his hammer? Come on. Yeah, I mean, you really, you think that's going to be a thing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Wow. I know. It's like that's uh, all the things that, that can have time travel. Like you cannot have time travel in Star Wars. It just, it breaks it because it's, well, but don't they, it's fantasy. Didn't they though? Well, they had sort of like a weird, you know, nexus interdimensional, oh, like dude, wiggly all, part. Okay, but can't, you can't actually no. travel in time no, in Star Wars because that would no. that would that would end it. That no, my nerd, it. my nerd head can't take it. Yeah, that's it. I can just no, take it where be. I'm glad we got. I'm glad what we got with Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes. God, watch Strange New Worlds. Yeah, and then we'll see what's next. Yeah, it's a pretty nice way to end this. Yeah, I think so too. All right. Yeah. Thanks. And that's where we're gonna stop the conversation for today. Thanks so much for listening. This has been the next chapter in the Curiosity Codex, but there are still many pages left to decipher. We're part of the True Story FM family of podcasts. Find out more about us at truestory.fm. Our theme music is Intrusion by Severed Personality, a.k.a. Kevin McLeod. The voice of the Codex is Vicki Hall. Find her on the web at vickihall.squarespace.com. And my name is Kyle Olson. The Codex is closed for now. <laughs>